Okay. Hello all and welcome to the 2023 Southeast Collaborative Online Conference. My name is Dorcas Davis and I'll be your host for this session. It takes a village interdepartmental collaborative approach to tween programming. This event is supported through funding from the Library Services and Technology Act through the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Please feel free to ask questions or make comments in the chat or interact with other attendees and the speaker within the Hoover app for this presentation. And now I'd like to introduce Natasha Payne Brunson and Cami Cook. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi. So my name is Natasha Payne Brunson. I am the Teen and Digital Media Lab Supervisor at the Verano Area Library for the Henrico County Public Library System. My name is Cami Cook. I am the Children's Services Supervisor at Verina Area Library in Henrico County Public Library System as well. And I've been a librarian for roughly hmm, over a decade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I received my degree from Clarion University um, with the Masters of Science in Library Science. And I've been a librarian since 2011, and I got my degree from Drexel University in 2013. So with um, both of us, uh, with our experience with working with children and teens, uh, we're going to be talking about our joint collaborations for tween programming. So we are located in Henrico County, um, and um, of, you know, it's a suburban of Richmond, Virginia, and the Henrico County Public Library um, have area and branch libraries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're an area branch system. So all of our li area libraries, which we work in, are bigger libraries where we have different departments and um, physically building bigger buildings. And our branch libraries are smaller with a smaller amount of staff. And so um, we'll give you a little breakdown of the buildings, as Cami mentioned before, and you'll see um, with the larger buildings, we, um, the departments we have, we have a circulation department, adult services department, um, a teen and digital media lab um, at three of the locations and, um, and um, children's service department. And the reference department, uh, we have supervisors, librarians, and public services specialists. Mm -hmm. And our public service specialists are non-MLS required reference staff. So the Verina Area Library um, is located seven miles from the downtown Richmond in Eastern um, Henrico. And, um, and we're not, we're not, far from downtown yeah. so a lot of people get kind of confused and think we're like far out because we're kind of rural mm -hmm. um, but our area has 58,000 um, people in the area and it's pretty spread out yes we uh as Natasha has said we have a very rural community a lot of our families are working families and tend to have intergenerational um, living establishments in their household. So a lot of the times we'll see grandparents bringing in their grandkids into the library. And we also tend to offer a lot of evening programs as well as programs on Saturdays to accommodate our, uh, our working families who tend to work multiple jobs. So um, our library was built in 2016. And uh, it re replaced a smaller library, um, which it was an area library, to, um, a smaller library to an area library. Um, and it was um, a lovely little Verina branch. Yeah. So uh, the library is a LEED Silver certified library. And we also received an award um, so LEAD is the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, and we received a, an award for the building in 2017. It's the AIA ALA Library Building Award from the American Institute of Architects and the American Library Association. 
So here's some pictures from, from my department. So this is the children's department. As you can see, we, we bring a lot of nature inside the library. We have um, our collection goes from board books to picture books, beginning readers and juvenile fiction and graphic novels. We have some computers and we have uh, lots of space within our, our departments. And this is my department. I'm very fortunate to work in this department and to have a, um, a team. And not only that, because um, the teams have a, a safe space and we have a collaboration zone, which um, you can't really see in this picture, but in, uh, in a slide, mm -hmm. but the collaboration zone is used for any and everyone to come and collaborate. Uh, we don't have like a volume um, policy as long as it's not super loud, um, but it's a space for everybody to, you know, come and work and study. Mm -hmm. um, my department's also responsible for the digital media lab and this is where we have a lot of our um, digital media um, programs we have we have 3d printing class which is very popular with um, our um, tweens and teens as well as adults so we do um, 3d printing classes for all ages and um, we do adobe re suite related classes as well stem related classes um, are held in the digital media lab. And we also have um, open lab hours for those who um, do not have the software at home and they can come in and um, use the lab. We also allow people to reserve the lab when they need to record or make videos, um, you name it. So another area library that we're, we're gonna talk about a little bit is our Fairfield area library. This um, uh, also just like Verina replaced a smaller building. Uh, this library opened up in October of 2019. And I'm gonna turn off the next slide. It has the benefits of having the first tween librarians, uh, tween librarian in our system. So pictured is Trisha. She works at the Fairfield Area Library and she helps out in both the children's and teen departments and um, provides wonderful programs for tweens as well as children and, and teens. So one thing we really wanted to um, inspire is to advocate for having tween positions hired within your library system because it's, it's super helpful to provide services for your tween communities. All right, so we can start talking about what is the tween. The reason that we talked about our building layout is because the children's department is on the bottom floor at Verina, while the tween, the teen department is directly overhead. So sometimes um, some of our books that are aimed towards tweens are shelved in both departments. So um, we decided to work together and we love working together to provide services and programs for our tween community. So tweens, it kind of varies how you define what a tween is. I've seen places that say that start at eight years old. It's pretty much anywhere from eight, nine to 10 year, old, 10 year olds up to teens. Uh, I'll show later about our um, programming, event programming calendar. And under our calendar, we have tweens as aimed at grades four through six, but it just kind of varies about what actually a tween is. So it's um, very important for us to because um, there's a, always a lot of focuses on early age and um, teens and adults, but we keep on forgetting about the in between. Mm -hmm. And so when the kid, the tweens come in, um, we notice like they want to participate in a lot of the teen programs, but uh, it's just um, hard to you know work with the <laughs> tweens with teens because the teens want their own space yes. and we want the tweens to feel important important so that's why we got together and started developing um, programs um, focusing on tweens and so the word tween actually comes from in between and they really are in between us they're dealing a lot with 
hormone changes, they're dealing with transitions of moving from elementary school to middle school or junior high, depending on how your um, school system works out. And a lot of the times that, yeah, they're just too young to socialize with teens, but then they also feel too old to be stuck in more kiddie programs. So um, like tweens are just emotionally not ready uh, to be in teen programs and um, tweens tend to take over in kids programs. So we wanted to make sure that tweens have an opportunity to have their own space to interact with each other um, as well as pursuing their own interests. So how we pick topics. So uh, it's very important to talk to tweens. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk to our patrons in general to get a general idea of the needs for our community, mm -hmm. but it's always good to talk to the tweens mm -hmm. to see uh, what their um, interests are and observe um, which programs the tweens try to join. Mm -hmm. So, and we'll talk about that a little bit later because you'll see some programs that look like designated for teens and we um, made it for tweens. Mm -hmm. And um, anything else you wanna add, Cammie? Yeah, so the with low stress, high interest, just making sure that the programs themselves, because tweens are dealing with a lot, they're dealing with their emotions, they're dealing with hormone shifts, they're dealing with learning how to socialize with each other. They're also getting used to getting more work in school. So programs providing more low stress programs that allow them to interact with each other and not be forced to do certain activities that they don't want to do, as long as keeping and as well as keeping it high interest. So that way they can explore what they they love to be involved with so we'll talk about food and other other activities a little bit later and so in our um teen department uh we have a tween book display um as you will see um and um our in this image um we have displays um, part of our collection called Neighborhoods, and we added um, between titles. It originally was a just a regular display, mm -hmm. display, but we added to our neighborhoods because we thought it was very important to showcase a lot of our tween titles. And Cami mentioned before how we select our titles too, um, because um, you can find um, a lot of the juvenile titles, mm -hmm. um, also part of our teen collection mm -hmm. too. <laughs> so yeah, when uh, selecting for tween books, books that are deemed tween, the criteria is mostly just to have a tween main character. And it, the our collection management department um, catalogs, whichever collection it, it lives in depending on the content. So if it has more teen content, then it lives in our YA collection. If it has more kid-friendly content, it lives in juvenile fiction. So we don't have any special stickers or any special labeling on the book that it is a tween book. So we rely a lot on tween displays and having the display itself labeled that it is tween. But in order to help patrons find the tween, uh, our tween books, we can have um, information in our metadata. So I'm going to show a picture from our workflows. We use Cersei workflows. And within it, in our item cat three, that's in the middle right screen, uh, we have a tween location. So those items are special collections. I think we also have one for mystery and adults and other special interests. So they created one for tween books. So the book itself doesn't show anywhere tween on the book, but it's just within the metadata. And on the user side of it, on our OPAC, we have a drop down menu where you can find those tween titles and you can do some searching and uh, use the advanced search as well in order to find the tween books and our tween uh, collections in both collections. So what does HCPL programming look like? So we plan six months in advance mm -hmm. um, for our programs. 
and we offer in-person program prim primarily, and um, we use LibCal mm -hmm. for our events calendar, um, and then um, we also have an audience for uh, tween programs. Mm -hmm. So here's a picture, here's a screenshot from our LibCal calendar. This is from the user side of it. Uh, so this is what our patrons will see when they're looking at our catalog. Under audience, we have tweens and it defines it as grades four through six. But whenever we, whenever Natasha and I put in programs, whenever other programmers put in programs, we can even choose which audience we want to. So you can combine tween with elementary or tween with teens, or it can just be tween. It's pretty um, fluid about how we can use it. So the benefits to partnership. Okay, so mental health. Mm -hmm. That's a big um, one. <laughs> that's very important, which we became very aware during COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very, you know, important to have somebody you can work with mm -hmm. so you can collaborate and um, do programs with, mm -hmm. um, but it also reduced the workload for individuals um, and collaborating ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and you just don't know, you know somebody who has more um, skills mm -hmm. or um, creative level when it comes to programming. So it's best to talk and engage and get to know your coworkers and staff to see what they're interested in. Yeah. And also super, it helps for us to work together when um, with, any staffing levels go down in case we happen to lose staff, then we can help each other out. Staff can step in for any programs and um, it, it really helps you feel not so alone. <laughs> um, another thing that's beneficial in Henrico, we have something called the Career Development Plan and that is where staff get cross-trained in different departments. So um, some of my staff might get trained in the team department and vice versa. And of that program, you actually are required to do programs in the other service area. So that works for us. And um, that takes off one less program that we're required to do and have the uh, CDP participants run the program. Uh, which makes it very easy, especially when we do cross training mm -hmm. with children and teens, because um, we get to focus a lot on tweens. And um, that was the... Um, the advantage we had here for a lot of our tween only programs too. Mm -hmm. And um, we have fun because we're besties. Yeah. <laughs> we love to work together and you know, we hang out after work. And it's just, it's, it's, it really adds extra to your workload when you just can come into work and have fun with each other. It's, it's a great time. Yes. All right, now we're going to talk about programs. So some of the, uh, you'll see a lot of pictures of our past uh, successful programs. These aren't all the programs we've done. These are just some of our favorite programs. Well, first we're going to talk about topics though. Here are some very, uh, these are topics that we um, have noticed have draw, have pulled a lot of interest from our tweens. And again, this depends on your community. Uh, this comes from us talking to our tweens and also just paying attention to the attendance of some of our programs. So books, obviously, library, we're going to deal with books. Um, food, of course. Mm -hmm. Food is always going to draw in any type of attendance to our, our programs. Um, technology and coding, that's super fun, That can, especially some of the tools that we'll have. I have a slide on that later, too. STEAM topics, so STEAM is science, technology, engineering, art, and math, depending on your preference. I like art. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yes. And um, anime is not only a big draw for our tweens, but also for our teens and for our adults. So we at Verina, we actually have clubs for all ages. We'll talk about that a little later. And then escape rooms as well. Don't forget d and Oh, D and D. I skipped over D and D. I'm sorry. D and D is also um, very, very popular. <laughs> okay, here's Meg Medina. So um, Meg Medina is our local uh, celebrity author that lives in the county, 
and she is the current ambassador for youth people's literature. We love Meg so much. Um, so last summer, she came out to all of our area libraries, so all of our bigger libraries, to talk about tweens with literature. I included a, a picture, some pictures from the events that happened here at Verina, as well as the handout of the, uh, uh, excuse me, advertisement that we used. And um, she showed off her Newberry in person, which was great. I didn't get to hold it though, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she also brought recorded chats with other authors and surprised our tweens with that. So at Verina, on the top right picture, um, at Verina, she showed off a recording of an interview with Erin and Trata Kelly, which was super wonderful. So tweens enjoyed snacks, because food, gotta feed them, and shared some of their favorite book titles. We had 16 attend at ours, and a highlight was at the beginning of the program. One of the attendees was very excited to pick out books because she brought in books with her, but she said that she couldn't stay the whole time. But because of Meg's enthusiasm, the participant uh, ended up staying the whole time and happily participated in their activities, and she didn't want to leave until at the very end. <laughs> so that was great. Um, we love Meg Medina very much. Right, and um, I worked um, with Meg um, in a previous library system, but I was sad I um, missed this um, event, but I was fortunate to have a staff to assist um, with it with, um, with Cami. Mm -hmm. So the next food champion. It's our uh, favorite. Yeah, mine. this well, it's mine too. <laughs> this program was my baby. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> actually, this was um, a, um, we did one for tweens and we did one for teens, and um, it's like chop. And we brought food supplies for the tweens to work together to make dishes. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a panel of judges to rate the food. Uh, we gave out certificates, uh, which. Um, with uh, <laughs> for the highest rating team, but we had different um, criteria mm -hmm. and um, like teamwork and um, more decorative dish, you know, different categories. But uh, we limit the um, participation to 25 and we had a waiting list mm -hmm. um, to make sure uh, we didn't, you know, feel overwhelmed. Uh, and we also had a budget too, and we we explained to them a, about where to go to buy inexpensive mm -hmm. um, groceries mm -hmm. too. But it was very engaging just to see what they would cr create. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the the tween program was held on the fifteenth of August, and the teen program was held on the. 25th, I believe, of um, August. And so we broke the, um, the kids up into small groups. And um, I was a little nervous because I wasn't sure how the judges <laughs> were the judges staff. <laughs> yeah, the, yes, they were staff. There were three of them. And um, they um, we're good troopers yeah. with a lot of the dishes. <laughs> uh, but it, it was it was really engaging. The parents sat in the back mm -hmm. and they were very pleased and um, share positive mm -hmm. feedback with us um, with watching the tweens. And I just thought it was really cute to get them dressed up as um chefs. <laughs> yeah. They work surprisingly well together in teams. It was wonderful. And um, the creativity was amazing. It was great. We'll show you pictures of some food creations that they made. And um, like Natasha said, we always, whenever we do food programs, because we are uh, lucky at our library to have a demonstration kitchen in our meeting room. And whenever we do food programs, we always like to make sure we shop locally to show off um, what families have access to in the area so they don't have to drive super far and um, we also taught cooking skills to the tweens so uh, teaching them because I have a little bit of restaurant experience so teaching them proper safety precautions whenever they're cooking if they want to cook snacks at home or for their family and we also um, so there's there's safety that goes along with it how to use the tools 
and also making sure everybody stays safe when they're eating their food. And I'm sure you all um, have done cooking related programs and may not have a demonstration kitchen, but there's resources out there like hot plates mm -hmm. or um, cooking um, with the microwave mm -hmm. or prepping meals without even cooking, uh, which I've done programs um, for um, go, um, young adults and go, um, early age college students mm -hmm. too, to show them meal preps without having all the essentials. Mm -hmm. So there's ways that you can still do a program like this if you don't have a, um, a demonstration kitchen. Yes. Just be mindful of if you have any risk management mm -hmm. that's the only thing you have to kind yes. of yes and we also put <laughs> um put up you know like allergies yes. warnings too yes so here's some pictures of what they created and it's so great <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we did put limitations on it we they could only use all the supplies that we had on hand, and there was time limitations too and um they were challenge to create an appetizer, an entree, and a dessert together. And so some of the awards that we gave out were on taste, teamwork, presentation, and even most bizarre. Mm -hmm. It's been so long ago that I couldn't remember what it was, but there were some, there were some beautiful plates and there are some bizarre plates. And so it was great. <laughs> so um, I believe we're trying to do this program again this year, mm -hmm. if not because of staffing issues. Yeah definitely next year yeah. so the uh this took place in 2019 we had planned on doing it in 2020 a ramen version but unfortunately we know what happened in 2020 so that had to get canceled right all right so similar to our cooking challenge um i also showed some fairfield programs as well they did a nailed it uh, much like the TV show. And so this is Nailed It for Tweens and Teens. It was inspired by the, the Netflix show. And participants were grouped together and given a photo of ocean-themed cakes, and then they had to work together and replicate the photos. And uh, they had 24 in attendance for this program. And it looks a lot of fun. I'm down for any type of messy creation. And as we mentioned before, you know, based on the topics, food, food will bring them out. Yes, yes. If you feed them, they will come in. <laughs> so the Spectacular Steam Festival, mm -hmm. another one of my favorite programs because my husband is a, a chemical engineer and um, he's like, well, I volunteer him to do <laughs> stuff for me. <laughs> and so we um, um, ran this program in October 2019 and um 2021 mm -hmm. uh, we skipped um 2022 because of staffing and we um actually um uh, was away to um at a conference yeah. <laughs> with the same presentation yes <laughs> <laughs> we were presenting so we were like mm, next year <laughs> so um the idea of the program because um uh, cammy and i were both like really into steam yes and so we wanted to um, have the kids explore um, different activities. So we had um, different stations. Um, the first year we had it in the meeting room, mm -hmm. it, um, we didn't have as many participants. We still had a good number of participants, but not as many mm -hmm. as um, we did in 2021, which we were kind of worried about because uh, it was after COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to move the program um, upstairs to the teen department. And um, I didn't mention before, but I'm very fortunate to work in a space where I can also have programs. Mm -hmm. And we were able to spread out and um, have different stations. And we had um, 52. 52 participants, which is very good. I yeah. mean, surprisingly good for our area because mm -hmm. we're rural. Mm -hmm. And so we had 20, 22 in 2019 when we were down in the meeting room, and then it bumped up to 52. So it really brought in a crowd. Um, and so some of the activities we did, we did Exploding Ghosts, 
um, spooky music, uh, catapults uh, with candy, pumpkins, I, because I'm not a fan of candy pumpkins, so I'd rather um, just <laughs> play with them be besides eating them. <laughs> And uh, miniature green screens mm -hmm. and um, slime. My husband did the slime mm -hmm. and candy towers. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't talk about this a little bit earlier. When it comes to where we should hold some of these tw tween programs, it really depends on what audience we're aiming for, what, um, what type of program it's going to be. So if we're obviously going to use food, we're going to try to do it in the meeting room. If we want more space, we can probably do it in different departments. Also, some programs later on, we'll talk about some programs that came from teen programs, excuse me, tween programs came from teen programs. So I moved those programs into my department just to make a separate space. Um, so it really depends on the exact audience we're aiming for and what we're doing about where we hold these programs. So we're going to be talking a little bit about partnership is um, it's very important to um, go out in your community or um, if you have somebody who wants to come in and do programs mm -hmm. to see uh, what is best um, fit for um, your community. Mm -hmm. And so we partner with Code VA and we did an Unplug Adventures um, um, throughout the county. Mm -hmm. And we had um, 10 attendees for this event. Mm -hmm. um, it was almost like a last minute <laughs> type of event, but um, 10 is not bad, no. especially um, if, um, for an afternoon mm -hmm. on a Saturday, mm -hmm. which there was a um, warm weather yes. and a lot going on. Yeah. Um, but like I mentioned before, you know, Cammie and I, we're really interested in STEM mm -hmm. and we wanted to build on this partnership. And here are some pictures from when uh, we had it at Verina and at Fairfield. And so relying on partnerships really helps if you have any type of staffing levels, um, if you're, and also to help relieve any type of stress put on the department. So that way you can just have your outside presenter come in. Or if you're and, not, um, you know, experienced or oh, skilled. Yes. yes, exactly. And certain topics. Yeah. And if you have a partnership that can come in and run the program for you, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so Tween Anime Club. So here's the anime that we've mentioned before. Tween Anime Club at Verina is held down in the children's department. This is one of the programs that was developed because we saw there was such an interest in some of our tweens going up to the tween depart teen department. So we knew that our tweens had an interest in anime. And so we hold it down in our um, program room or where we do a lot of our story times. That way we can use the technology and it's closer in space and it's separated away from the teens. And so it gives the tweens a little bit of um, alone space where they can just talk about anime. We show movies and we show TV shows depending on which one. It also, since we hold it down in the kids department, um, we can only show PG and G and I think it's TVY and TVY7 depending on it, we can't show all the, any, anything higher than that ratings wise. Right. And as um, mentioned before, I'm sure you all are aware when tweens come to a lot of teen programs, the teens don't feel comfortable, you know, talking about certain topics mm -hmm. or they can't, you know, or they try not to relate to the tweens. Mm -hmm. So I'm very fortunate to have Cami take on the tween anime club mm -hmm. because um, a lot of the, uh, the tweens want to participate. They do. And um, it's the same thing with gaming, which we're mm -hmm. going to mention next yes. too. Yes. Uh, so yeah. even though it's called a club, it's not a monthly club. It's really just more of a quarterly club. So here's our tween video gaming. Uh, just like the anime club, this came about because we had a lot, we, we have video games up in the teen department, um, 
but I, we know that tweens want to play video games. So we hold these video games down in the children's department. Right. And uh, we do have um, open gaming, mm -hmm. um, but it's really sad just to see tweens to come up and it's like, can we game? And it's like, sorry, um, no. But uh, we originally had a Wii U. We gave it to, mm -hmm. um, to um, kids. Thank you. <laughs> And um, so um, they can game downstairs, but we do allow um, kids grades three, um, grade three on up to game with their siblings, as long as the siblings there, um, they just cannot game on their own. <laughs> but we just want to make sure we fill that gap when it comes to interest. Yeah. So just, yeah, this is a high interest um, program. And this is one that you don't have to do a lot of prep for, mainly just setting up the equipment. And um, it's great to allow them to get some of the social interactions that video gaming allows them to do. And um, oh, this is also great to have on hand whenever we have outreach groups, because sometimes we'll have groups that have older school children come in so we can use this when we have daycares and child care providers come in. And um, so for the video games, we don't check it out, but we just have open times um, whenever we set up the program. And even, and this is also not a monthly club. This is a uh, more quarterly, more occasional uh, program. Minecraft server. So, uh, all the most of all the programs that we've talked about so far have been in person. This is one program that came out when we closed up and uh, during 2020, and we opened up Minecraft server, and we had designated times during the week that library staff would be on to interact with kids or teens or tweens, whoever wanted to. While this wasn't exactly a tween focused, we did notice a lot of tweens were attending the Minecraft server. So on the pictures are, um, are some libraries that we've made within the server. There's our Takahoe Area Library, Libby Mill, and on the top right is Verina being built. Okay. And actually Minecraft, um, the program, in-person program started at Libby Mill. Mm -hmm. And when Verina opened up, I wanted to bring the program <laughs> Um, to um, our digital media lab. Mm -hmm. And it was um, intended for tweens and teens, but we just got kids in. Yeah. <laughs> kids and tweens, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but we would have um, a monthly Minecraft um, program mm -hmm. in the digital media lab, but um, with the technology um, issues, it was becoming a problem keeping up with the updates mm -hmm. but I've heard there's a lot of changes yeah. that happen and there's talks about bringing back the in-person um, Minecraft um, program which was very successful mm -hmm. um, very popular because um, the kids love it mm -hmm. We, yeah, it's they've done a lot of updates. I, I'm I am somebody who plays a lot of Minecraft. They've I done, don't. I, <laughs> they've done a lot of update, updates to the game. They've even they have a new one coming out. It's like 1.20, and um, they're gonna add cherry blossoms, and it's supposed to look super pretty. Anyway, and D and D, we're gonna talk about D and D. We're gonna talk about D and D, but um, uh, Minecraft. Uh, so they have a lot of updates. Oh, just recently, one of our branch libraries had. Uh, somebody had made these cardboard creations of some of the characters and it was beautiful and like the kids were being super into it so Minecraft's still around. <laughs> okay so digital music. Um, this okay one of my staff uh, was a musician or is a musician and had an interest in digital music production. He is um, he was one of the children's staff and um, was participating in our CDP program, our career development plan. So was getting cross-trained in the teen department. So this program came about as part of his plan and he's taught various music software for tweens. And even though, so this is one program that doesn't pull a super large amount of numbers. It's such a, it's such a focus area 
that the, the tweens really get a lot out of it from it. So even though I think we had two or three come, they were just invested the whole time about learning about digital music and how to produce your own music and um, different tools that you can use to create your own digital music. And I believe this is a da dancing uh, buzz bot mm -hmm. <laughs> from Fairfield. They did um, a program with, uh, um, this is um, Ozzy Ozzy bot. Mm -hmm. And so we also have kits within the library system that allow staff to book mm -hmm. for technology and programs. And we have um, some kit kits on hand too. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the Ozobots, uh, Little Bits and Makey Makey. Um, there's also the Escape Room kits um, that we can use to teach um, coding and teamwork with tweens. Uh, does this play or no? It's just a picture. Yep, it plays. Here's a little demonstration. Okay, <laughs> so it, you learn coding with the Ozobots um, through color recognition, and so you learn a language when how you draw um, the different creations, and the Ozobots reads it and performs whatever action you do, depending on what colors you add to it. I don't have a D&D &D slide. But... Um, we can talk about D&D &D yeah. real quick. D&D &D has been booming lately in our library system. I know it's been around for a long time, but our our um, teens and tweens have been really getting into D and D lately. Right, and we run a, a monthly D and D club here at the line um, at Verina. Um, other locations run it too, but we ran into problems where there were younger um, kids, the in between kids, um, not just tweens, but the um, you know, younger kids and tweens would um, want to participate in the program. And then we uh, were thinking about ways and doing research to figure out what would be appropriate for um, the um, kids to play. So we talked more about uh, tabletop. Mm -hmm. So we tried to, you know, adjust and revamp and even see if there's some children's staff on board who can run um, tabletop or, or, or like D&D programs. I'm not into D&D, so don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> but we do know it draws a big interest. Exactly, because we ran into major problems. And as I, we mentioned before, um, we want the teens to feel comfortable in their mm -hmm. space and we want to um, have tweens engaged mm -hmm. so eventually um um some of the staff at different locations mm -hmm. and children's will run um D, D related programs mm -hmm. for the tweens yeah and it sounds like we have a new uh resource that have been um i don't know if it was purchased or anyway supplied to staff mm -hmm. so that staff can um learn more about D D and feel comfortable running their own D D programs and that's Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> okay, and another thing we do at the library is do take and makes. And um, back in 2020, when we, you know, things shut down, we started giving out take and makes for kids. So I just included a, a, a quick screenshot of one of the instructions that I made specifically for tweens. And this was a, a coding bead bracelet. And so I gave all the all the they got picked up super quickly um so every bag had beads in it and instructions about how to code using the beads and we were also down in the children's department we were also including hoopla books just in case they weren't able to get some of the physical books we wanted to make sure we provided a resource that was available on hoopla that they could uh check out and read more about coding and for the teen department we um do take and makes for tweens and teens. And we tried to make sure um, that we picked the appropriate materials mm -hmm. so um, tweens can also engage as well. And um, it seemed like we get more tweens who come in and, uh, and take the take and makes compared to the teens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for the, teen, for the tween take and makes, we like to have a little bit more, not, 
so much academic, but, but more so than just crafts, mm -hmm. than our kids take and makes and just something more that they can learn for, by doing. And I also um, forgot to mention, we um, have maker boxes, which if you want to um, have like passive activities inside the library, because uh, sometimes kids come in and want to be disruptive or hang out at the desk, but uh, we have maker boxes, which um, we forgot to share a slide, um, where the kids, the tweens and teens can come in. And a, a lot of the... Um, kits inside the maker boxes are similar to the take and makes mm -hmm. too. All right, so that's um, all of our past successful programs. Here are some upcoming ones that we're working on doing. Um, not all of these are just for tweens, but a lot of them we know are gonna, are gonna pull some tween interest. So we actually have another tween anime club coming up next month in the children's departments. There's uh, gonna be escape rooms and um, escape the library. Escape rooms, I didn't mention before. So we do escape rooms. We have book, uh, excuse me, uh, kits that we can book to um, bring to the library so that we can do our own escape room here. And um, down in the children's department, we offer them quarterly and we, we bring in a, a large crowd of tween and kids to that program. Our last one had 24 come mm -hmm. out. So that was, that was a good time. Nice. And I'm really excited about our tween and teen uh, Mario Kart um, party because of the movie coming out and I want to dress up. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't want to be the only one dressed up, <laughs> which I, when I used to run anime club, I was the only one really dressed up, but we're really excited about this program. It's going to be similar to, um, the spectacular um, party, uh, but they're going to play um, video games. They're going to do crafts um, and so much more, mm -hmm. and probably will eat as well. Yeah. And then there's minute to win it um, for um, tween participants. Mm -hmm. We know they will come. Mm -hmm. um, Star Wars trivia night. Mm -hmm. And we have a Maker's Lab series. And I forgot to mention before, we would run the Maker's Lab series and Upcycle Lab series um, for our branch um, library, which is um, the Sandston um, branch is um, underneath our umbrella. And we used to um, go over and do programs. It was originally intended for teens but we would get a lot of tweens mm -hmm. so it's a big tween community mm -hmm. and so we passed on the maker lives um, programs to sandston and we even provided um, um maker boxes for them as well mm -hmm. and like we said before we have a lot more so i think we're up into about August in programming wise. So we're gonna have more tween programs in the summer and fall. So we, um, we're gonna be talking about um, doing our <laughs> program, the um, Next Food Champion program. So we're gonna to try to see if we can do the ramen. Yeah. Who doesn't like ramen? Exactly. <laughs> all right, and that is all we have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Natasha and Cami, for being here today. And thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar. If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to the speaker or conference host using the Hoover app. An evaluation is provided with the conference session resources, and we welcome your feedback about the session and the conference. Thanks, everyone, for making the 2023 Southeast Collaborative Conference successful. See you all next year. <laughs>